Today we're going to talk about why a plastic bag is not the perfect shell layer. So, the shell layer is basically your protection from the elements. You wear it as a reinforcement when you need it. Otherwise, you can rest it in your backpack. True, because I mean, a good shell layer is, of course, it's a type of investment, uh, both for security, but also in terms of money. So it makes it last a little bit longer if you take care of it and if you use it only when needed. You have to think of the, the moisture from the body as a factor that has to be regulated with the shell layer. And that's why a plastic bag is not enough uh, as shell layer. You have to use a material that is a little bit more sophisticated than just uh, plastic. Yeah, I mean, the plastic bag can be used for like your cell phone or the <laughs> sleeping bag or something that doesn't breathe. True. The higher the air permeability, the less the protection from especially rain and yes. wind. Yes, that's true. So there is a, it's a fine balance. Yeah. Um, and also you can, you can actually choose uh, what type of jacket you want to uh, wear for different occasions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have different constructions as well. Yes. Um, so I'm thinking on the upper body, you know, you could have, talk, we're talking about the traditional jacket. It could be a hooded jacket, yes. which gives you a little bit more protection. And then you have uh, maybe an anorak, which has like a shorter zip um, and a, a longer poncho. coat or a poncho. And then on your legs, we talk about, I mean, traditionally trousers, of course, or bib trousers, if you want them to be a little bit higher but also uh, shorts or skirt Yes, uh, works as a shell layer on, on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes when you talk about shell layers, you're just thinking automatically about what people would refer to as a rain jacket. Yeah. But shell can be so much more than that. It could be, this is, is more of a shell for wind. Yeah. This is a windshield. Uh, protection less. from wind, but yeah. also protection from sun. Yeah. When would you want to use this one? If I am uh, maybe trekking in the mountains with uh, quite high intensity, if it's windy, if I'm uh, even running. Yeah, and the packability makes yes. it perfect for yes. travel and for, yes. all, I yes. mean, uh, a lot of different activities. Yeah, and if you're trekking for, for many days, you don't want to have a, a wind a uh, shield that is too heavy and too bulky. Next in line. Yeah, the high coast uh, shade jacket. This is uh, made from G1000 Air Stretch. So it's uh, G1000, that is our material with uh, uh, polyester cotton blend. So it's super durable, good protection from a lot of wind and a lot of sun. Uh, it's not waxed as the G1000 original, so it definitely also has its limitations when it comes to, to uh, water. Really useful in, in a windy environment where you're still, or a very warm climate, mm. uh, where you want the protection from, from sun also, and yes. uh, sand or dust, etc. Yeah, and also uh, the hood is also very good in combination with this thin material. Good choice. Good, good protection yeah. in warmer climates. In warmer climates, yes. That's G1000 Air Stretch, and G1000 comes in a multitude of different variants. Yeah. And uh, you're wearing one G1000 jacket. Yes. And I'm wearing another one. You are wearing the Kaipak jacket. Yes. And yeah. uh, I'm wearing the Skuksa jacket. And these both you can use the Greenland wax on. Yeah. Um, to get them a little bit more uh, water um, repellent. Yeah, I mean, the Greenland wax is a fantastic mm. way to adapt your uh, shell layer to, to your preference. Yeah. If you add uh, wax to like your shoulders, the hood um, and the sleeves, the bottom of the legs, you can add water repellency a lot. And yeah. uh, it also adds a little bit of wind resistance but it also traps the air that wants to come out from your body. Mm. So it uh, impairs the air permeability a little bit. It's a good shell 
jacket for, for winter, for sure. Yeah, because if it's only snowing, no problem. Yeah, no problem. But it has to be below zero. Yeah. yeah. If the temperature is a little bit above zero uh, and it's starting to get some rain uh, in the air, then I would definitely um, go for a eco shell material instead of this one with the cotton blend. Perfect for, for any weather condition where you have to protect from water coming from the outside. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, this is what most people would refer to as a shell jacket. And it's a waterproof uh, membrane laminate. So it's a three piece construction actually that is laminated together into one material that you see. And the polyester membrane has the capacity to transport out your moisture from your body while being waterproof from rain coming from the outside. It works only because the temperature on the inside is actually higher than the temperature outside. That's what's going to make the moisture travel from the body and out yeah. through the material. Because the material doesn't really know <laughs> on what side it's raining and on what side it's uh, a lot of moisture coming from, from uh, the body. So don't use it in the sauna. Ex That's what you're saying. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. This okay. is not for sauna. <laughs> so I personally like the, the eco shell because it's soft and it's quiet yeah. <laughs> when you're using it. But there are also many other advantages. Yeah, so all our products is free from PFCs. Also, the material is uh, made from partly recycled polyester. And all, the fact that the entire jacket is made out of polyester makes it recyclable for the future. And then the entire jacket and the whole process to produce it is climate compensated. So it is a good choice. So what else do we have? Uh, I have, for instance, a poncho here. Oh, yeah. It's easy to forget that that is also uh, a very useful type of shell layer. Yeah, maybe not with the backpack on, but you can have the backpack, a smaller backpack on, under, of course. That yes. works. Yeah. But, but uh, I mean, here you don't have to be that worried about uh, air permeability in the material as it is very open and can handle a little bit of moisture anyway. But if you're, and if you're caught standing still, like in the rain on a concert or if you're out uh, wherever, it's like, okay, you're quite protected. Yeah, so I also brought one of my favorite pieces which is the Luca. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. This is not either a piece that I would use if I'm trekking uh, because it's you, know, you can't wear a backpack. But whenever I go ski touring uh, and I uh, and I have a, um, uh, what do you call it? Pulka. Pulka. Or yeah, sled, behind, yeah. yeah. Uh, then I always bring this one because it's so practical. Whenever I take a break, you just put this one on. Uh, you mentioned before you can have like down trousers or a skirt uh, to for reinforcement on the lower body. So this is also a very useful piece, I would say. So once again, I think it's all about what type of activities you're doing. Yeah, and this is G1000 uh, or uh, yes. Echo original. Yes. So it's possible to wax yes but uh, I mean for Arctic cold climate dry weather it's a perfect piece I'd yeah, say I also think this is a perfect piece to uh, illustrate that it is a reinforcement because you don't want to wear it when you don't need it <laughs> that's true so true <laughs> that one is much nicer yeah all right um, a lot about shell layers yes there what? are many types of shell layers uh, but we do hope that you got some tips and tricks uh, and maybe you learned something new. And, Kalle, Yeah, what I else? mean, no shell layer is better than the person inside of it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and you still have to adjust to the circumstances. Yeah. So uh, subscribe to our channel, follow us and uh, post your comments in the fields below. And um, we hope to see you out on the trail soon. <laughs>